What are some R-rated things that probably happen in the world of Harry Potter that the story doesn't address? A couple taking Polyjuice potion with each other's hair to bang each other as each other. There must be a huge black market for celebrities' hair, obtained from hairdressers or something similar. The implications around love potions and spells are disturbing to think about. Even the books touch on it a little bit with Voldemort's parents. Love potions are more or less the perfect date are pay drugs. And yet they are openly and legally sold to teenagers. In fact. I cannot think of a single good use for a love potion. Rowling did not think this through. The imperious curse that removes free will is unforgivable. But the potion that forces you to love someone you normally wouldn't is a okay? I guarantee there is at least one person out there who is addicted to Felix Felicis, the luck potion from Half-Blood Prince. I mean. If it can get you a perfect day. Don't you think there is someone out there who brews that stuff on bulk? Or even a company that just sells that. And uses it every day to try and have a perfect life. Maybe there's a rehab center or a felicaholic synonymous for people who are Felix Felicis addicts trying to quit, similar to actual drugs in the muggle world. If I remember right in the books, and probably in the movies too, it was said that Felix Felicis is highly addictive. But when used too much will FCK you up and even cause death. Really similar to some real drugs we have. What exactly was a Burforth doing with those goats? Inappropriate charms can mean quite a few things. Comma J. K. Rowling was asked in 2007 what exactly a Burforth did to the goat to be prosecuted. Below is a transcript of the interview. Comma Q. In the Goblet of Fire Dumbledore said his brother was prosecuted for practicing inappropriate charms. JKR buries our head. To laughter. On a goat. What were the inappropriate charms he was practicing on that goat? Comma JKR. How old are you? Comma Q. 8. Comma JKR. I think that he was trying to make a goat that was easy to keep clean. Laughter. Curly horns. That's a joke that works on a couple of levels. I really like a Burforth and his goats. But you know a Burforth having this strange fondness for goats if you've read book 7. Came in really useful to Harry. Later on. Because a goat. A stag. You know. If you're a stupid death eater. What's the difference? So. That is my answer to you. It's a school with a hundred empty classrooms and abandoned spaces with hundreds of horny teens running around. I want to know more about wizard birth control. They've got to have better shti than we do. I read someone else mention this on reddit a while ago and it amused me. The fact that McGonagall turns into a cat means that everyone has almost certainly seen her anus. Accidental genital mutilation by incorrectly using enlarging charms. Someone probably at one point stuck their wand up their own ass and used an illumination spell to turn themselves into a jack-o'-lantern. I know I would. In the last book. It's mentioned that many of the first year wizarding students had simply gone missing without explanation. Because of the death eaters on the loose. These kids are never found. It's pretty frickin' dark to imagine the Hogwarts Express getting stopped and boarded. And all the young first year students getting escorted to concentration camps. It just takes one arsehole witch wizard to get away with a whole lot of s or assault. Who needs a roofie when you can stun someone and wipe their memory after? Really attractive witches wizards selling bits of their hair fused with Polyjuice potion. I've always wondered how many s or mishaps Madame Pomfrey has to deal with. Like. There has to be male students who tried an engorging charm at one point or another and it backfired. What about STDs? Do wizards have different STDs? Newt's commander said that muggles have different physiologies than wizards, in context of medications. That said. Can a muggle born introduce a new STD to the wizarding community? There has to be birth control charms or potions. As you never hear of pregnant students at Hogwarts. Is there an abortion spell potion? Is this controversial in the wizard world? Is there a spell that girls can use to intentionally stop a period? I mean. If you can magically straighten teeth or have skello grow. 
I don't see it as being that far-fetched. The punishments are pretty extreme. As Coban should be considered a crime against humanity. In the Fantastic Beasts movie it was too easy for the main characters to be sent for execution. It also bothered me that the executioners were so calm happy helping someone die. Umbridge should not have been able to use a magical hand scarring pen to punish people. Honestly. It feels like the law in that world has no limits. And I'd be scared if I lived somewhere in which that was normal. Wizards witches have probably committed some pretty sick acts because their legal system is shady. For example. They could torture someone as punishment and instantly heal them. Over and over again. Or they can use a spell that forces them to experience their worst nightmares. There could be people who think that a pay case could be fixed by erasing the victims and the criminals memories. And pretending that the whole event never happened. Anonymous turning into an animal to FCK other animals? Mad Eye Moody had an eye that could literally see through people's clothes and he taught in a school with minors. Think about that. No. But he taught. Honestly. Given what we see of him dude was probably too busy jacking to thoughts of riddle. Memories. When you can transfer them so freely as wizards do you can live out the sickest desires while never having to commit the crime yourself. There was this one bit in the books where Ron was practicing cheering charm spells and did it wrong and ended up being all giddy and laughing and had to be led away for an hour. Charm junkies. There would just be a bunch of wizards sitting in a basement duplicating and transfiguring food and water while spending the rest of the time constantly ecstatic on cheering charms. What flying on a broomstick for hours on end does to a man's parts that must not be named. I wonder if Quidditch players have special protection for their little chaps. I hope so. For sure. I'm not 100% sure it's canonical. But at some point I came into possession of a real version of Quidditch through the ages. I believe it was originally written for some charity thing. Which mentions how broomsticks were in fact extremely uncomfortable until the development of cushioning charms to make things tolerable. I would imagine modern sport brooms would actually be quite comfortable. Marizo even than bicycle seats and such. The story of what really happened to Umbridge when she was taken by the centaurs. I mean in Greek mythology centaurs were notorious for being violent towards women and arping them. Students hooking up. Doesn't even need to be any magic involved. Maybe someone using their potions or herbology skills to make some wizard drugs? I can see Fred and George doing this. It is pretty clear that the books are all from an over the shoulder perspective of Harry. Who is in many regards clueless or mistaken. I'm quite certain he, and Ron, simply missed a lot of what was going on. Hermione is fully informed about the boyfriends Ginny had even in her first few years. I assume the whole place is a lot more date heavy than we know. Simply because the perspective, and target demographic of the books, of course, didn't show us. Harry Potter rubbing one out to Cho Chang. The bad thing about is, that if he's doing it to a picture of her, that picture is aware what's happening. Invisibility cloak peeping Tom incidents. I imagine the BDSM world in Harry Potter is much much more fun and crazy. I imagine the Polyjuice potion is way more popular than the book suggested. Doubtful. The book with the recipe was kept in the restricted section. And I doubt many were allowed access like Hermione was. A use of Polyjuice is so against her public image that I don't think the teacher would suspect her of doing such a thing. Hagrid's dad was an exceptionally short man who nailed a violent, 20 foot tall near human. Giants aren't pretty. Based on the description of Grawp they look like enormous, hairless apes. There's probably a wizard in college somewhere which makes the antics and hijinks in the wizarding high school look very tame. All kinds of date rape spells. Abortion spells. Sobriety spells. Drug trip spells. For eternity hazing rituals involving human sacrifice and conjuring demons. Etc. Now I'm wondering how a movie through college years in the Harry Potter universe would be. The Engorgio spell on tits. A spell that can make things big. 
The first thing a teenage wizard will try it on by the following. Their food. Their dick. Some poor woman's tits. Or ass. Some dumbass kid casts the spell on his balls for a laugh and suddenly can't walk around anymore. Honestly. Has no one read Hogwarts? A jizz story. Edit. Unfortunately the only known copy was destroyed by Fiendfire in the Room of Requirement. Along with the Mirror of Seaboob. And most of Filch's wooden DLDO collection. Probably some f-king while under the effects of a levitation spell. Some of those kids were definitely masturbating to the thought of the professors. And not just the cool hot ones like Lupin or Lockett. Someone was definitely jerking it to Hagrid at some point. Also a lot of people are like oh all those kids alone in a big castle. They were definitely having a sex. But the castle is full of ghosts. I wouldn't want to be having SX if there was a chance peeves could just float through the door. Not to mention if Snape caught you. Sure you could go into the one bathroom where Moaning Myrtle hangs out. Because nobody goes in there. Except Moaning Myrtle isn't there. She would definitely be a mood killer. That said. I would guess there was definitely some shenanigans happening during Quidditch games and the True Wizard tournament tasks. It doesn't sound like it was mandatory to go to those events. But everybody including the professors went. So you just stay behind with your boyfriend and do whatever while everybody's out. I honestly have a feeling Ron and Lavender did more than just making out if you know what I'm saying. I bet they held hands. On the more gory side. Rowling has never fully explained how someone makes a horcrux and she has actually refused to tell the public. She apparently told the exact process to someone once and they actually got really sick from hearing the details. I can only assume that beyond just murder. It's pretty gross. Heck maybe it's an act of necrophilia. Young couples running off to elope and making the unbreakable vow to love each other until death do us part without realizing the full consequences and literally dying if they ever fall out of love with the other. Selling drugs to muggles. Druggles. Ghosts watching underage schoolgirls M. Sturbert. S. Zul exploitation of house elves. I heard they love peanut butter. This is literally every single fanfic ever written. I'm surprised there wasn't a Fifty Shades of Grey spin-off for the series like there was for Twilight. Spin-off might not be the right world. Edit. Fanfiction. The politics of Harry Potter are something worth exploring. There's a Ministry of Magic and it has some sort of legal enforcement powers and its own prisons. That engage in clearly cruel and inhumane punishments that almost certainly violate the ICCPR. And they claim the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom at least is clued into the existence of this society. Magic society also has its own currency and banking institutions so they must lend out money and. Again. Have a currency issuing authority. There are several problems with this. For one. Sovereign states like the United Kingdom aren't super happy about another state existing in their territory and arresting people trying them imprisoning and torturing them having a thriving banking sector that pays zero taxes. It also means wizards who aren't well connected to the muggle world may not have official citizenship in any muggle nation and are thus stateless persons. People probably used the Cruciatus curse for some BDSM kinkish tea and then someone used it as torture and ruined it for everyone by getting it banned. You know Madame Pomfrey had to cure a few Ingorio charms. Unforgivable curse or not. I absolutely guarantee you that there are people who would use the Imperious curse consensually for BDSM purposes. Even just the description of how it feels to be under that spell reminds me of the subspace mindset that can definitely be a thing in a DS situation. It would probably be pretty hidden. Because unforgivable curse. But I would have no trouble believing it happened. I imagine at least one werewolf woke up the next morning vomiting bone and hair and scraps of night clothes. Then saw that the cage was one charm shy of protecting their loved ones. Then killed themselves. Comics to Jian Frown. For sale. Baby shoes. Partly digested. Percy Weasley and his badge polishing. Bellatrix probably did way more f ked up things than cut mud blood on Hermione's arm. 
the Weasleys are f***ing. Again. Way too many of these answers are just lol. I bet these people have SX. Or dude. Magical weed. Full stop. I don't know. You have a better idea of what a bunch of unsupervised teenagers are going to get up to in a place with more secluded corners and classrooms than you can shake a stick at? Cause I'm pretty sure SX is at the top of the list. Voldemort's nose is like that because of his helpless cocaine addiction. Harry and Hermione spent an awful lot of time in the Deathly Hallows alone. Sleeping together in a tent. And both in very vulnerable emotional places. Comma Harry and Hermione spent an awful lot of time in the Deathly Hallows alone. Sleeping together in a tent. And both in very vulnerable emotional places. More importantly. Neither had much if any alone time for a wank. Harry definitely used the invisibility cloak to watch Ron and Hermione bang. There would probably be fetishes for having certain spells used on you. Getting high in the astronomy tower. Spoilers for the cursed child, not sure if people still care about them. And I'm not sure how canon this is. But oh well. Voldemort had SX. Like. Full on SX and got Bellatrix pregnant. He was about 70 at the time, even if you say he was revived. He was most likely brought back in his 60 year old body. I gagged when I first thought about that. I can see why you'd want to bang Tom Riddle. But Voldemort? No thank you. Also. The fact that he was able to get someone pregnant at that age astounds me. Close bracket. Also. A lot of spells could be used to take advantage of muggles very easily. But Voldemort's dick somehow freaks me out more. We don't talk about curse child. Wizard abortions. Fetus deletus. All the weed behind the herbology greenhouses. The popular smart kids coming to their afternoon lesson eating endless amounts of chocolate frogs and biscuits because munchies. Having to write home to get your mum to send a few more galleons because your tits have grown out of your uniform. And you're grateful the school shirts are plain white so it saves a bit of money. Kissing the cute boy from your house at the Yule Ball. Then he pressures you into going further because he's brought his wand and you were trusting enough to leave yours in your room. Being constantly terrified of being hit by some spiteful curse from behind because you're the wrong house. Racially motivated fights down the leaky cauldron. Because some idiot can't hold his mead. Harry dropping a load in his best friend's sister. Slither in your event law in her while she huffle puffs your gry finder. I think my huffle just puffed a little. Arthur Weasley must be good in bed. Two words. Turning into a chicken. Let a rooster fcku. Lay an egg. Weekly orgies in the requirement room. Teenage wizards have to seek out muggle PRN magazines because spanking it to wizard PRN would be weird when the pictures interact with you and judge you. Waifu pillows with moving pictures. People using spells that impair others judgment or knock them out, such as stupefy, to preform kidnappings and are pay people. Edit. I just remembered that there are love potions and spells. Which are another method of arping people. But you make them think they wanted it the whole time. Pretty f ked up if you think about it. Locker room hazing by the Quidditch teams. Where has that snitch been? The snitch isn't handled until the game as it imprints the first person to touch it. Wizard drugs. My kid and I were actually talking about this the other day. There has to be spells that cause altered mental status. Or potions that get wizards high. Gryfinder. Would be all over that. Gryfinder. Do you want some? Yes. Just fckm me up. Fam. Or. They'd stand up to their closest friends and stick to their guns by not taking the wizard drugs. Slytherin. Would either be dealers. And exchange wizard drugs for money. Status. And favors. Or they'd sneer at the thought of ruining their minds and reputations with wizard drugs. Reventlor. The ones who did wizard drugs would do a ride style retoops of their trips and figure out how to enhance their trips. 
the ones who didn't do wizard drugs would still be interested in their history and healing applications. Hufflepuff. They're wild cards. They're the lot that doesn't go to any of the other houses. So. Their yes and no reasons and effects could be just about anything. Teachers. Hagrid is a major stoner. He buys from a dropout from Hufflepuff who runs her operation out of a magical creature supply shop. Convenient. Profession Minerva McGilly and McGonagall significant Quidditch gambling issues. I'm pretty sure. Moaning Myrtle was called Moaning Myrtle for another reason. Cloak of invisibility covering everything except erect dong. Spells can make things explode. No doubt a wizard or two has exploded from an accident or in a duel battle. Or like the flying shards of glass from that fight between Dumbledore and Voldemort at the Ministry of Magic. People just cut to pieces and stabbed to death by flying silverware. I think Lupin was giving traumatized kids chocolate edibles on the DL. Aussie eat this. Points wand at own dick. Engorgio Maxima. If you were a magic 13 year old boy. You would. Let's be honest. At least once. Wouldn't just be the boys making use of it. Madame Pomfrey must have seen some even weirdish tea than the books mention. Obviously golems are possible to make. So what kind of monstrosities have some wizards created? I'm sure someone has made a flesh golem or some such at some point. Has anyone gone full necromancer in this regard and created an undead army before? Comma has anyone gone full necromancer in this regard and created an undead army before? I mean... In theory? There's got to be a charm that can make a wand vibrate. Think about it. Semicolon. And if that isn't enough for you... Consider this. Hogwarts is full of hormonal teenage girls. Wizards will often use each other's wands if they have to. How many times do you think a young wizard showed up to class and was like... Shti. I forgot my wand, you'll have to let me use yours. Question mark? Neville definitely uses Hermione's wand at one point. Semicolon. One can only hope wand cleaning charms are taught fairly early on at Hogwarts. Surely you just do the normal thing and put a vibrating charm on a hairbrush? It occurs to me that the wizarding world is basically some kind of uncap anti-government fever dream. Children are given reality warping weapons at age 11 with the expectation their parents will teach them to be responsible. And regulation is so lax that date are pay drugs are sold in joke shops. The government is both corrupt and inept. To the point that a government appointed school teacher can get away with literally torturing children for wrong thing. The ultra rich can join terrorist organizations and then get off the hook because they said sorry and paid a few people off. Mass murdering terrorist hog shows up and the government refuses to even acknowledge it. So a handful of concerned citizens form a militia. Teach combat skills to school children. And then fight the terrorists themselves and win. Like. The more you think about the world of Harry Potter. The more you realize it's inadvertently some kind of uncap objectivist anti-government screed. Wait what the hell. You mention government how many times? How is that uncap at all?